Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is J.C. Legar with Chloe Legar, and we're going to continue with the Gospel of Luke. This will be part 106 through 109. But, Chloe Legar, before I do anything, what should I do? Pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, Lord, I want to thank you for every opportunity I have to share the Word of God with my daughter. I pray the Holy Spirit would fill me right now and enable me to do it in a way that is clear and understandable, and that her and everybody who is watching can be blessed. I pray it in the name of Jesus, and everybody said, Amen. All right, so let's see where we're at today. We're in Luke 10. Verse 23, and he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So notice the question he's not asking. He's not asking, what must I do to be saved? But what must I do to inherit eternal life? Like you can inherit something that is a gift from God. So he wants to be put on a works trip because he is a proud lawyer. Like what great thing must I do so I can boast in my accomplishments before God and at the end I can inherit eternal life. God isn't going to operate that way. So we're going to see real quick how God feels about pride in James 4 verse 6 here. It says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. So we're going to look at what Jesus says here. He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? Now that is a strange thing. How does God resist the proud? He's going to give him the law. And what is the purpose of the law? It is not for us to be saved by it. It is as a mirror to reveal how we truly are spiritually before a holy God. Think of it this way. If I, wanna, if I believe you're sick and I say to you, Hey, I got some medicine for you and I want to give it to you as a free gift and I offer it to you, you're going to look at me like I'm insane because you feel fine. You don't think you're sick. And if I'm more earnest, like, come on, please take this medicine, you're going to go, bro, 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 get away from me with that. I don't know who you are or what you're doing. And in the same way, if you come to somebody who doesn't believe they're a sinner and you tell them, hey, you need to say this prayer with me. Jesus died for your sins. And they're like offended. They're like, what do you mean sins? I'm not a sinner. I'm, not, I'm a good person. I do this. I do that. So in order to get through to them, you have to reveal to them their sickness. And you use the law to do that. The law will not save us, but it will reveal to us our need for a savior. Let's go through the commandments. Chloe, what's the first commandment? The first commandment is, you shall have no other gods before me. And has anybody ever kept that law? No. The Bible says we have all gone astray. We've all gone to our own way. 
It is the nature of sinful man to turn and run from God because God is holy and we are sinful, so we're not after pursuing the God of the Bible. The second one is... The second commandment is you shall not make any graven images and bow down before them. So God wants us to worship him and him only, but the nature of God is, or the nature of man is to create an idol and a false God that he feels comfortable with. People will say to me, Jesus is, and then they'll form a Jesus in their own image. A God of love who would never create a hell. He's not judgmental. He accepts everybody. He wants to be your friend, your buddy, come alongside you and just love, 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 love you. But the Jesus of the Bible is holy and righteous, and he calls us to repentance and to follow him. And... They're not comfortable with that, so they created Jesus in their own image. Third one. The third commandment is, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Whenever people stub their toe, do you ever hear them say Buddha or Muhammad or Allah or any other false deity? No, they use the precious name of the Lord Jesus as a curse word, and that is blasphemy, and the Bible says I will not hold Anybody guiltless, whoever takes my name in vain. So, ugh, blasphemy, very serious. Number four. The fourth commandment is remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. I don't know anybody who sets one day aside and does no work and just rest and focus on the goodness of God. Everybody's doing their little things and working and... They dishonor God. Number five. The fifth commandment is honor your father and your mother. Who hasn't talked back to their mom and dad and given them some lip and attitude? We're all guilty of breaking that one. We've dishonored our parents, so that's not good. Number six. The sixth commandment is you shall not commit murder. And we're going to look at this. A uh, lawyer and Jesus is going to expose he's a racist in his heart. He hates Samaritans. And we're going to look at what the Bible says. If you hate anybody in your heart, you've murdered them. So have you ever hated anyone? Keep going. The seventh commandment is you shall not commit adultery. The Bible says also, or Jesus says, if you even look upon a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery with her already in your heart. Ever looked at anybody with lust in your heart? Keep going. The eighth commandment is, you shall not steal. Have you ever taken anything that didn't belong to you? It doesn't matter if you were a little kid when you did it. Time does not forgive sin. If you've ever taken anything, you are a thief. Number nine. The ninth commandment is you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Have you ever told a lie about anybody? Gossip, slander? Yeah, if you've done that, the Bible teaches all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. And the last one. The tenth commandment is you shall not covet. Have you ever desired what belongs to other people? If you've done that, you've broken the commandment. And if you're hanging by a chain and one link of it breaks, you're going down. And as I've shown, we've broken all ten commandments. So again, the law cannot save us. It condemns us. So when we look in the mirror of God and we see the, ourselves in truth, we go, oh my gosh, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. So what is the, what does the law do? Let's have a look-see in Psalm 19, let me see, Psalm 19.7. Why did Jesus use the law? For this reason. 
The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So God wants to convert this guy from thinking he's good to realizing he's a sinful human being and on judgment day when he stands before a holy God he's in big trouble and he'll hopefully come to Jesus humbly and say God what must I do to be saved and the right answer then will be to believe on the Lord Jesus we are saved by grace through faith. Do I have a verse that says such a thing? Of course I do. We are in Ephesians. Come on, come on. There we go. Ephesians 2. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So we are not saved by works, but we are saved unto good works. And in Titus 3, verse 5, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So let us continue. What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, do this, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? So again, he is wanting to justify himself. So again, the law needs to do a work in this man's heart. So we're going to see in Romans... What is the purpose of the law? 3.19 Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So again, this guy wants to justify himself. But the law is going to condemn him. The law is supposed to shut your mouth. I am a good man. I do this. I do that. Look in that mirror. Let it reveal to you what you really look like to a holy God. You are a sinful human being. Shut your mouth. Stop trying to justify yourself to a holy God who is perfect. <laughs> All right, let's go to Romans 7. Verse 7. 
What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. So again, the law will never justify us. It will just reveal to us our sinful state. And it's important to show people the law. In the same way, if I, as a doctor, tell you I see ten clear symptoms on your face that you have Ligarex disease and you're going to be dead within two weeks and I show you the mirror, you see your reflection, you see what I'm saying is true, you see the symptoms I show you in the book and on your face that this is a fatal disease and I go on and on about how you're about to die and I see sweat coming, your heart is pumping and I see you're really taking it seriously now and there's fear in your eyes because you don't want to die and you're like, what am I going to do? And then I go, I got good news. Here is the antidote for your sickness. Am I going to have to try to persuade you and talk to you into now taking it, now that you're convinced that you're dying? No, you're going to grab it out of my hand and say, give me this cure, and you're going to down it. That is the purpose of the law. It makes you realize I am in great danger if I die in my sin and stand before a holy God. I need a savior. So the law grabs you by the hair and drags you through the thorns of your conscience and drops you before a blood-stained cross. And you look up at the savior shedding his blood for your sins and you cry out to me, God, save me, forgive me for my sin. And that precious blood washes you clean. Let us go to Romans again. We are in Romans 10. And this guy, he is wanting to justify himself. Let's see why he would do that. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So if you're to ask me, JC, do you believe you're going to heaven? I am going to answer, absolutely. And if you were to ask me why, I would tell you not because of anything I have ever done. The only thing I've ever done is offend a holy God who loves me. I have willfully sinned against him. But God in his mercy sent his only begotten son to die for this wretched sinner. And all I had to do was to look to him and to believe on his death, burial, and resurrection. So heaven for me is a free gift. The moment I believed and I asked him to forgive me. So I'm going to heaven, not because I'm good, but because he's a good savior. So let's go now to Galatians. Galatians 2, verse 16. 
Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And here at verse 21 it says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So what that's saying is if there was anything that I could do to save myself, then Jesus would not have had to die such a horrendous death on a cross. If I could pull myself up by my own bootstraps and just do some mighty thing to save myself, then I could have done it. I don't need a savior. Glory to me. But no, glory to God for sending his son to die for this wretched sinner. So where is boasting? Not boasting in myself, but in the finished work of Jesus Christ. All right, so Jesus is about to give us a parable of the Good Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, and poured in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And you got to remember, at that time, the Samaritans were Jews who married Gentiles, and they were hated by both Jews and Gentiles. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host, and said unto